Welcome back to the Livingston Parish News Weekly Show. This is a podcast brought to you by we here at the Livingston Parish News. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Joining me today is Mr. J. Rogers Pope, who is running for State Senate District 13. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, McHugh. Glad to be here. Appreciate you having me on your show. Absolutely. And thank you for taking the time to be on the show. Uh, we we had we did run through a morning show just earlier. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot more about the seat itself and, and the campaign itself than we will about uh, Mr. Pope's uh, sort of previous experience. If you're more interested in that, please check it out on the morning show. You can see this show, those shows, all of it at www.livingsofparishnews.com backslash podcast. You have audio and video versions there. They are free. Check them out at your leisure. Recommend the audio versions. You don't have to look at me. And voice is heavily edited. It's very, it's great sounding. So anyway, uh, thank you, sir, for being here. And, uh, you know, let's jump right into it uh, real quick. Give us a little bit of background about yourself. Well, uh, uh, I've been in Livingston Parish most of all my life. I met my high school sweetheart, married her. We've been married for 50 plus years. I have two children, a son and a daughter, six grandchildren, which is the light of my life. <laughs> and and uh, worked in the school system here for many years and uh, multiple jobs. I won't get into that again, but we, we've worked in there. That's that's probably been the, the most rewarding thing that I've done as a, as in a professional career is to work in the school system. So after that, you, you got out of that, yeah, after being superintendent for 14 years, uh, became uh, kind of gotten into educational consulting. From there, uh, seat opened up in the house, and so take it away from there. Well, as you said, the seat opened up. Uh, I was encouraged to, to try to run for that, which my wife and I decided we would do it. We did in 2007. We ran. I spent three terms in the, in the House of Representatives. Uh, very successful terms. I think we've done a really good job for the people of this parish that we rep, rep, oh, well, rec, represented, if you will. And it's been a great experience for me. Mm -hmm. I, it's really, really been a good experience over there. I've learned a lot. You go there, you're thinking you know a lot, but you learn a lot that, and things that you don't really think you know, you you learn in a hurry. Well, in the morning show, we talked about, you know, what are, what are some of the successes? But in that vein, let's talk about that first. Okay. You know, uh, what were some of the hard lessons learned right off the bat? Well, first off, you, you've got to go in and you got to try to build coalitions with the other 105, four members. You're 105. There's 105 mm -hmm. members in the House of Representatives. Building coalitions in, in most every vote over there takes 53 votes. Mm -hmm. And you got to have those people. But if you don't build coalitions, and you got to have trust, you got to build trust with, with your, your colleagues. Mm -hmm. And they got to build trust with you. Mm -hmm. And you learn to, to know which doors to go in, which ones to stay away from, you know, you, you, the ones you can depend on, ones you can't depend on. And it goes back with ideology, you know. Uh, Parties, if you will. All right. A lot of that has to do with it, but you still can can have bridged those gaps between both sides of the aisle, if you will. And we've been able to do that. Right. And and so you know, a lot of it has to do with it's not necessarily uh, fighting. No. For, it, it's about working with other people and trying to yes. move forward the goal. Uh, so you know, in that in that vein, and working together, what are some of the successes that you uh, that that you're very proud of? Well, I, I just look, and we'll look at infrastructure first, and we're talking about roads. There, there's other infrastructure that we've done with uh, drainage, with uh, sewer, those kinds of things. But roads is in, in, in transportation is the huge thing for us out here mm -hmm. uh, right now. And, and if you go back and look, in 2008, we started uh, widening Interstate 12 mm -hmm. from O'Neill, and it's gone past that summa now. Mm -hmm. We have plans to go on out toward Hammond. Mm -hmm. Hammond is coming this way. We'll eventually have a, a six-lane I-12 from, hopefully from the Mississippi line all the way in, back into Baton Rouge. But that's a huge thing for us in order to move traffic through our parish. Mm -hmm. We also built a new bridge uh, with our, a lot of help, not sure. me, but a lot of help at uh, uh, 190. Mm -hmm. Of course, obviously at Interstate and also at Magnolia Beach. Right. You know, we also got a new bridge at Port Benson. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do now is to try to find out another way to get across the Avent River back into Baton Rouge and Ascension Parish where these 
a large number of our people go to work every day. Right. So, so uh, you know, trying to uh, being a part of that solution to yes. traffic is, is is a big deal. So, you know, you and Mr. Dale Erty, who was uh, the senator in this That's seat, uh, you you were both term limited. He he's decided to retire. On the morning show, you talked about your your willingness to serve. You know, uh, go a little it, it, talk to talk to us about your mindset. I guess you can say on a daily basis, and 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 lead that into why you've decided to run for this seat. Uh, and, and before I answer your question, I want to go back to a previous question and mm -hmm. and let you know about some of the things we've done. Okay, sure. I, I have asked for and have been able to work on the transportation committee mm -hmm. for two terms, which is eight years, and I think that's helped us get some of those things and some of those projects out here. Sure. Back to your. Uh, Question: If you mm -hmm. want to repeat it, I'll, I'll answer it. Sure, uh, and I'm I, I'm sorry I didn't mean to oh, cut no, you I, before I, you were I, done. That that was my fault. <laughs> so, what I was saying is, you know, Mr. Dale Erty, who was in this Senate seat, yeah. is was term limited and has elected to you know retire. Right. Wants to focus on his insurance business out in Livingston. Uh, you know, on the morning show, you discussed your willingness to serve uh, as something that sort of pushed you. Uh, you know, talk a little bit, let's get a little more in depth with that. Okay. Talk a little bit more about your sort of day-to-day -day mindset and then give us a real, you know, breadth of when that seat opened, you wanted to go for it and why. Well, knowing uh, Dale and I were, have worked together extremely well the 12 years that I've been there, you know, and he was probably my mentor. Mm -hmm. He's encouraged me to run for this because he he thinks as well as I think that I'm the person who needs to go there in order to continue some of the work that not that he started but we have started as, mm -hmm. as, as, as a group. We're, we are with this and, and I guess not only is he a friend, he's a real good legislator. Mm -hmm. Been a good legislator for this district. I got into this in 2007. Mm -hmm. But it's been one of the greatest experiences of my life. It's totally different than where I was in the education field. Mm -hmm. I was a servant of the people there, and, and you know, with stew kids, adults, parents, et cetera, et cetera. This is a little different. We're, we're now serving people mm -hmm. every day. And I think that I am not just a servant of people. I want to help people. Mm -hmm. and, and God's given me the ability to do that in multiple ways. I think what I'd like to do and continue to do in the Senate is to do some of the things we've been doing. We, McHugh, you would be surprised how many calls we get on a daily basis, a weekly basis, of people just not knowing how to navigate the system. Right. And it's no fault of theirs. It's not that they don't, they're not mentally capable or anything like that. It's just a convoluted system. Right. So we help those people, and that's rewarding to me. When I can take, and I'll give you an example, when I can take, as I'm working with right now, an 89-year-old mother who lives in the city of Dillon Springs who was flooded in, in 2016 and still not back in her home mm -hmm. because of some bureaucracy, mm -hmm. I've got to help that lady get back and in, in where she can get back in her home. Right. Her son and daughter, have just they've exhausted all their, their resources, number one. My responsibility as an elected official is to make sure that she, as well as other people in that situation, is happening. That's why I've, I'm serving on a task force for, for Restore Louisiana. I work with those people every day. I, 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 I'm trying to work with that, with a duplication of benefits, trying to get the resources here in order to get those people back in their homes or businesses, whichever the case may be. That's my thrust. That's my heart. That's what I continue to do. And I will do that because God's given me the ability to do that. And, and, and I'm so appreciative of that. So, you know, talking about that, you kind of led into, you know, some of the issues. And one of the issues is, is that, you know, recovery isn't over. No. You know, it, it, it's just not. And, 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 and building towards the future has just gotten started. Talk to us a little bit about your experience with the flood. And then what's what's come since, and what's going to come? Well, I, I can talk about a personal experience. I, I, I would, my family and I were flooded in 1977, 1983. Obviously, in in uh, 2016, we had three plus feet of water in our home, just like most people in this parish. We dug our heels in. We were going to rebuild. We were going to stay in this area because that's where we grew up. That's where we are just a part of. Mm -hmm. 
And it's been a great experience doing that with limited resources and very limited help from from different sources of whatever. I was asked to uh, to serve on uh, Restore Task Force, which was made up of a 21-member committee statewide in order to help direct where the federal funds that were coming in to help rebuild some of our our area, our parish, if you will. Uh, very, very honored to do that. Took a lot of time, multiple meetings around the state, around the area, around the region on where these funds go. We'd meet once a month, but we'd have multiple meetings leading up to that meeting. Sure. Took a lot of time, a lot of effort. People mm -hmm. don't understand that, but that's what I chose to do mm -hmm. because I was asked to, and I thought I was I, I was the person to do it. Okay. And we have done that. We've been on that task force. We've also served on task force for the the Comet Diversion Canal. Mm -hmm. Been there, huge thing. And and with the help of a congressional delegation led by Garrett Graves, we've been able to get the money. That project is on on task. It's it's ready to be open. Supposedly in the year two thousand twenty one. Right. Ambitious, but as we speak, that is on undergoing moving utilities, digging ditches. So maybe it will help our area in, in the area of that devastation that we went through 16. We've got to, in my opinion, also look at the buildings that we're putting here. Mm -hmm. We want to continue to grow the parish. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm certainly want to want to do that, but we've got to do it, in my opinion, in a more effective and a, and a, and a more directed manner. Mm -hmm. Every time you pour concrete somewhere, the water's going to have to be dislodged somewhere else. Sure. And, and if you build north, the water gets to, to the people in the south a lot quicker. Right. You know, All of our water issues come through from the drainage issues for the biggest part of from starting up in the Mississippi. It comes right through the middle of Livingston Parish. Mm -hmm. It all goes to the Amit River eventually. It mm. may go through different canals, different streams, different waterways. Eventually, it's going to end up in the Amit River, right. which eventually is going to Lake Marpaw. Right. The river, we know through the many, many years, because it hadn't been dredged in, geez, eons. I well, don't know when. Since the 50s, I since believe. Since the 50s. I think you're right. We know what silt does. We've got to dredge that river in order to get a better flow of water. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that that would reduce the, the water levels and along the people that live along those rivers tremendously. Um, I think the back to the comment, you know, we, we probably can affect 500 plus homes in just the city of Dunn Springs alone mm -hmm. by just doing that and redirecting water. Those are the kinds of things that we got to keep doing, but mm -hmm. we've got monies to come in and to do some other drainage issues in this mm -hmm. parish. Mm -hmm. We've got to work with the parish council. We've got to work with the, the parish president to make sure those resources are directed, and I think they are. I think they're doing a, a, an admirable job of working on a plan to try to do this, but we got to expedite that plan. We've right. got to get it done because people are out there, they're nervous. When it rains, I know in the neighborhood that I live in, mm -hmm. you know, when it rains, they come knock on your door. Are we going to flood again? That That is there, and it's mm -hmm. ingrained. I don't think the community... This parish, this region, I don't think we can stand another 2016. We've got to prevent that at all costs. Right. Uh, you talked about the Comey and its effect here locally. What are your feelings on the Darlington? Well, that's something that's been talked about for eons of years. It came up and, about five years after the Comey. Uh, <laughs> exactly. And, and obviously, that is a huge piece of the puzzle, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. The issue is people who are the landowners, you know, they don't want to give up the land to, to, to do these kinds of things. But if we can, we'll, if we could build that reservoir, we probably could have lowered the water level by as much as two to three feet mm -hmm. in this area, which would have been huge, not just for the sake of people that, that we have, but look at the dollars, look at the federal money that we could have saved, Yes, you know, by building something like that. And that's why I think that we are finally beginning to see we've got to be forward thinking and proactive in trying to prevent this instead of of trying to react, react. to it after it happens. Right. If I, we can prevent it, we're better off 
than reacting to it and fixing it. Absolutely. I, you know, uh, Mr. Mr. Congressman Garrett Graves brings yes. up all the time the cost of disaster recovery has now yeah, gotten absolutely. up to six times as much absolutely. as disaster prevention. Yeah, so you you know you were you, you brought up the phrase puzzle piece, you know, and and as one of 39 members of the Senate should should you be elected, you will be a piece of that puzzle talking about first uh, you know, we've we've talked about roads, talked about drainage. Uh, you know, what are some of the other things that, you know, uh, especially from an education background as as your part of that puzzle piece in the Senate, uh, will you be focused on? Well, I, I think you know, not just roads, bridges, you know, infrastructure, flooding. I think education is a key piece to whatever we do, not just in this state, but in this country, and certainly in our region, is very, very important. Mm -hmm. I think the school system has been a big driver of building the parish the way that it is and getting people to come in here with the growth that we've had. Could, mm -hmm. could be bad, could be different, you know, depending on who you, who you are and what you look at. But I think it's really enhanced our parish through the years. Oh, yes. I want to continue to see that happen. We have fought for, we'll continue to fight for the resources it takes for us, not just locally, but for the region, Central, Tangipo Parish, Livingston, Ascension, the surrounding parishes, because I think it's all tied together. Mm -hmm. But we're going to continue to fight for the resources we have through the Minimum Foundation Program, which funds K-12 education. Mm -hmm. Higher education is important. To give you an example of that in just a minute, we were able to secure funding to help Livingston Parish School Board, Tangible Parish School Board, and Ascension as just a, a, an additional supplement to their funding source to help get through the flooding issues so we wouldn't have to have a reduction in force in those areas. Kept people working, and as a, as a result, they're still on the job, and, and we're back to almost the level where we were number-wise with students in all three of those areas. Right. Uh, <clears throat> that is huge for us. Mm -hmm. McHugh, what people don't know is is one of the reasons that we're getting beat on pretty good is because we supported some issues over there that were very important to our area. Mm -hmm. My thing when I was elected and the commitment that I made, as long as it's not illegal, immoral, it's best for the parish, I think I'm elected to go over there and represent you the best I can, and I'll do that. And I right. think I've done that extremely well. People want services. People don't like to pay for services. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to have services, somebody pays. Can we redirect services? Absolutely, we can redirect monies. And, and, and there's always fluff, I guess, in everywhere. But can you do this? One prime example. Mm -hmm. Last 2018, in Livingston Parish alone, we had 952 high school graduates that were qualified for the top scholarship that was going to be cut if we couldn't come up with some kind of compromise to keep that going. Right. Top scholarship for a parent or a guardian of a student is equates to about on an average statewide of about twenty two hundred dollars per semester for tuition. Mm -hmm. That's forty five hundred dollars a year. Yeah. For a parent that that states helping that kid go and further their education. To me, it's huge. That's almost a thousand people just affected in Livingston Parish alone. Mm -hmm. When you multiply that, I think it was well worth the time for me, along with forty other house of house members that pledged to be Republicans, conservative Republicans, which mm -hmm. we are, to understand we can't let this happen. Right. We've got to have services. Mm -hmm. We've got to have that. We know what we've done to devastate higher education. See. Those things were very important to me. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not a tax and spend liberal by any means. I've been labeled that, but I'm not. Right. I'm very conservative, but I also believe that we got to have services to, to take care of the needs of the people, where it be in education, where it be in health care, where it be in what we talked about already, roads, infrastructure, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. People want services. They deserve services. And it's up to us to help deliver those services. And it's important to remember here in Livingston Parish, there are two major uh, parts of the school system 
uh, and that is a driver of our economy. Uh, we're talking about 3,000 you know, faculty staff, so at largest employer by far. 3,564, because I just got through sending every one of them a letter. Oh, there. okay. Okay, so we have grown. And yes, we have. Also, uh, you know, Weyerhaeuser, uh, by, real, by terms of, of size of real estate, owns the most land. But in terms of improved real estate, the school system is also the uh, largest real estate holder. Uh, so, it, you know, a lot goes into that job, yes, a lot goes into that system. It's very important for yes, our parish, the yes, public school system. Yes, is. Is. Uh, and, and I might add, when we're on education, just yesterday we had the ribbon cutting for something that we've been fighting for for many, many years and I was a part of and was just delighted to be part of the ribbon cutting yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that is the North Shore Technical and Community College, which is located on Burgess Road between Dillon Springs and Walker. Yes. Huge, huge for this parish. Oh, yeah. And yes, I took some beatings on that because I made a vote that people didn't like. Mm -hmm. But I would make that same vote today because it was the right thing to do for the people, not just high school kids, but for people that are uh, adults who want to go back and enhance their skills and, and, and whatever. Example for welding. We have welding, electrical. We have things that they can go and enhance their skills to, to elevate themselves in, in the work world right. as, as young adults or older adults even. Huge for us. It will be for the next 50, 75 years. So I am so elated to be a part of that. I was I was disappointed I couldn't make it. I was I was in uh, this room with Jeff Hart. I understand. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I saw the pictures. Kevin was there, and it, it looked yeah. like a good ceremony. It was it's, a great ceremony, and it's a huge deal. And they will be working in tandem with the Literacy Center and Southeastern. That is correct. That that that's going to become a very yeah. uh, a very interesting it's hub going, of educational it, it's opportunity. It's going to be a hub right here in our parish, right? Where we got North Shore Community Technical, we got Southeastern, we got the Technology Center, we got our school district you know we're all working in conjunction we're all on the same page going in the same direction it can't do anything but help this parish from an educational standpoint right and you know uh, just and interesting to see all three of those come together because it is it's, it's a funnel for the school board because they are participating they are absolutely and 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 and, and I will take some credit for that in order to orchestrate the, the, the bringing these parties together. Mm -hmm. We worked uh, even back when Dr. Clausen was at Southeastern, we started these process. We've been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, even when your dad was here, yes, he understood the need, and we, we worked with him mm -hmm. in trying to get a community college. It never has come about, but, but it took all these entities to get together and come together with, with a memorandum of understanding and they're working together as a cohort group because they understand right here we're in the middle of, of something that can explode in this parish. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting. It is exciting. It's very exciting. So we, we talked about drainage, infrastructure, as well as education. Well, I know you got somewhere to be, so let's wrap it up here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about you served on multiple committees yes. in the House. Uh, you know, let's talk about just real quick. You know, some of the committees you'll be focused on in the Senate, and then we'll get you out of here. Well, I've been on transportation. I think that's huge for us. Health and welfare, I've been on for 12 years. I think we have tremendous health care needs. I'd like to serve on the Education Committee. Obviously, it would hurt my feelings if I got on, on, on the Senate Finance Committee mm -hmm. or, or where we get to do some amount of money to sure. appropriate. And that would be one that I'd be very interested in. Mm -hmm. But I will take and do whatever I can to, to enhance this parish and fight for whatever I can to enhance, regardless of what committee assignments I get. And that, that's done through the Senate president, much like it's done through the uh, House Speaker. That is correct. Side. That is correct. So, uh, Mr. Rogers, thank you for being here. We appreciate you taking the time. Anything you'd like to say to wrap up? I just want to thank you for having me here. Thank you for the opportunity. I hope the people that, that are in the listening years of here understand that the need, I am going to put in a plug. I am running for the state Senate, District 13. I need your help. I need your support. I need you to continue to send Roger Pope to the state Senate so he can continue to work for you, with you, and for you, because that's my passion. That's my will, and that's what I want. Not for me as an individual, but for, this, for the people in this parish, because I am committed to it, have been, and will be, regardless of where I go or what I do. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the opportunity, and go vote Pope.
Yep. And early voting runs through tomorrow. Please remember to go early vote. If you don't, please go vote on October 12th. You can early vote 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Dem Springs Walker Branch Library, as well as the Registrar of Voters Office. One more time, thank you, sir, for being here. If you ever miss these, you can catch them www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash podcast. We will catch you next time. We will have some that we're recording this afternoon that will come out over the weekend regarding campaign finance and a, a few voting things. So stay tuned, and thanks for joining us. Joining us.